Hey, I'm Alicia from MobilityMastery.com and today I want to talk to you about bulging or herniated discs. And really when I say that I mean anywhere in your spine. So it could be in the cervical spine, could be in the lumbar. Uh, most people when they experience a herniated or bulging disc, it's usually in the lumbar spine or the low back. But some people experience them or have it happen in the thoracic or, you know, cervical. So. I'm going to apply what I'm going to teach you in today's video to any of that. And before we dive in, I just want to say, I've got to give my little disclaimer here. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a surgeon. This is my kind of opinion based on research I've done and uh, working with people in pain who have herniated discs, both cervical and in the lumbar region. And so, you know, this isn't meant to be medical advice. I'm not going to tell you to do one thing versus another. I just want to share what I have seen, what I've researched myself, and then I encourage you to do your own research uh, based on what I'm sharing and make your own conclusions because you're the owner of your body. You live, it, live in it, not me. And so all I can do is kind of share my experience, but I want you to make your own educated decision. Okay, so a long time ago, like when I first got started in 2008, I was introduced by some of my mentors and teachers um, to articles they had printed out and, you know, that I read, uh, as well as the links I was sent online uh, that showed Harvard studies and other studies done that pretty much proved there's no correlation, proven correlation, between herniations or bulging discs and pain, whether that's back pain or cervical pain. Uh, and the reason they can say this or that these studies say there's no proven correlation is because there are literally millions of people in the U.S. who have bulging or herniated discs and have no pain. Zero. They can be active, they can do what they want, they're living their lives, they can throw their kids in the air, no problem, and they have a herniation. And then there are millions of people who have herniated discs or bulging discs and they have pain. And then there are the people who have, you know, what Western medical science calls idiopathic, maybe low back pain or cervical pain, where there's no, nothing to image, right? There's nothing on an MRI, there's nothing on an x-ray, there's no bulging disc or herniation, uh, and yet they have pain. <laughs> and so in my experience and opinion, pain is more complex than just identifying something on an image that's wrong. And when it comes to bulging uh, discs anywhere in the spine, in my opinion, they're a symptom. They're a symptom of something else happening, and it may or may not be accompanied by pain. So if you're arriving at this video and you have pain with the bulging disc that they've imaged, I'm gonna suggest to you to try on the idea that maybe the pain you're feeling doesn't really have anything to do with the herniation, and instead, you need to find the root cause because the bulging disc is maybe just a symptom in addition to the pain. Like those two symptoms are happening at the same time, but they may not be causal, right? The, the herniation may not be causing the pain that you're feeling. Uh, so in the case of low back pain, which I'm gonna guess, most of you are here probably for low back pain, like a herniated disc in the lumbar spine, the most common being L5, S1. That's what I hear a lot of the time when people walk into my office. Uh, you know, most people arrive to my office or to me, maybe here even online, having already gotten the diagnosis, right? You've already gotten the MRI. Maybe you did a cortisone injection. Maybe you've been talking to a surgeon. Maybe you already did surgery and none of those things took away your pain. Super common. I see it all the time. And in my opinion, the reason is Western medicine likes to focus on the area of pain exclusively without looking at you know, the lumbar spine and its, you know, relationship to the rest of your body. So they're looking only at the spine, right, or the area of the disc and not to the rest of your body. And in the case of bulging discs and uh, low back pain in particular, it almost always has to do with a pelvic instability situation. And when people walk into my office, my number one priority is getting them out of pain. Uh, you can have a popping joint with no pain. I don't really consider it something to worry about. You can have a bulging disc and no pain 
And you know, like, are you gonna sit there worrying about it and dwelling on it even though you're not in pain? I hope not. Your body will tell you when you need to pay attention, when there's a threat. And it's gonna do that with pain signal. So in the case of low back pain, to find the root cause, you've gotta map your lower body fascia, left to right, front to back, find out where the imbalances are, what is happening fascially to potentially pull your pelvis right out of alignment or create a tilt or a shift, right? Uh, I have videos on this channel that can help you understand that better, uh, even from the perspective of one leg being longer or shorter than the other. I have a video on that that we can link to for you. Uh, so you need to take care of the root cause and your pain will go away when you find that root cause. And it almost never has to do with your low back. So number one thing with bulging discs is leave the disc alone, leave your back alone, leave those muscles alone around it. They're usually not the problem. If they're seized up, it's trying to protect your spine. It's trying to actually stabilize you uh, due to some of the other issues we talked about in the lower legs that are maybe causing that pelvic instability. And in the case of the cervical spine, it's kind of the same thing, but a little bit more complex in nature, and I don't see it as often. But if you have a bulging disc there, again, I encourage you to consider that maybe that's just a symptom and it's not causal to the pain you're feeling. And so you, want, you would wanna look at everything in your upper body fascially, your arms, your biceps especially, your chest, right? Are you getting pulled into forward head posture uh, or forward rotated shoulders? I mean, that's gonna put a serious strain on your cervical spine, and that might actually be the reason you're feeling neck pain. So I have a ton of resources on this channel for neck pain specifically, anything in the arms, um, or upper body, the chest, the deltoids, the scalings, the SCMs, all of that is gonna do wonders for supporting your cervical spine. Uh, I would do stuff on the front of your body before I go to anything in the back of your body. We have a tendency to wanna go straight to, you know, the traps or the rhomboids, uh, or maybe even the small, tiny little muscles back here that are hanging on for dear life while your head's forward. <laughs> um, and so I encourage you to go to the front and to all this front fascial stuff down here first. So that's my take on herniated and bulging discs. If you're arriving here with these issues, would love for you to share a takeaway. Is this news to you? Uh, you know, like, have you explored all those other Western medical traditions first and you're arriving here, you know, looking for answers? Uh, I hope you got some answers here and the resources on Mobility Mastery will help you actually take action on everything I just said. So I want you to comment below with your takeaway and then what you're going to do to take action. There's a search function on this YouTube channel. There's a search function on my blog. So you can search back pain or neck pain and find all the related posts that you're going to need to problem solve that for yourself. So do that right now. Let me know you're going to take action. Uh, and if you're new here, make sure to hit subscribe because I'm sharing new content every single week. And if you want to join my email community, which you should, uh, I do newsletters every week as well as email trainings that I don't do anywhere else on occasion for my email uh, community. So I hope you'll join and I'll see you next time.